See it, feel it, taste it, and live it. Get ready for Keeping Up with Barbara Scheidegger, joined by Dr. Pat. Healthy living can begin at any stage in your life. You need to have clarity on where you are and where you want to be. Whether you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s, or onward, you can still create beneficial habits that will help you on your path to ageless living. The ability to make our lives better lives in each and every one of us. Transcend beyond what you believe you can do and find out what you really can do. Can you keep up? Keeping Up with Barbara starts now. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to Keeping Up with Barbara. I'm Dr. Pat, and I want to tell you, I get to do this incredible episode with Barbara. I get to do a number of shows with Barbara, but also being having the honor of walking step by step with someone, literally stepping on a journey together. It, it is so profoundly incredible. It is really hard for me to actually express what that's been like. And I've given it a lot of thought because this is our 20th year. So I've given it a lot of thought. And my people that are close to me are like, why are you crying again? I'm crying again because I get to introduce all of you tears of gratitude to someone that knows what it's like to move past obstacles, to not get stuck in, you know, the, the thoughts of our past, you know, to have a point of view and a perspective that says keeping up is the thing to do. You can do it you can have it. When I talk to you about Barbara and Barbara Scheidegger and you hear today's show, and th think about this, don't let age change you, change the way you age. Think about that. Now, many of you are thinking, oh, uh, uh, no, if you're 20 and you're hearing this show, this is for you. If you're 30, it's for you. If you're 40, it doesn't matter what your age is. This is a message for everybody. Barbara has been a leader in the field of human potential. She is an international thought leader. Um, she is a certified clinical hypnotherapist. She's an entrepreneur. She's been CEO of one of the top companies out there producing products that people absolutely love. She knows what it's like to be a woman entrepreneur. She knows what it's like to go through the ups and downs of healing. And today's show is from her heart to yours. Barbara. What do you think? I love this. Am, am I right? Like this here, don't change, don't let don't let age change you. Uh, this is for every every age. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, I realized that uh, in my twenties already that I had to change my view of aging when I saw people getting older, and I looked at them and I said, "No, I I I don't want to be there. I want to be in shape. I want to be uh, active and." of course, healthy. And that starts actually just the day you're born. You know, if you're even as a baby, when you're young and you're not fed right and you're not taken care of right, it affects you uh, in your life later. And I would say today, just listen, you know, don't blame it on your age. <laughs> blame it on your laziness. <laughs> blame yeah. it on your, uh, it's okay, I, I can get away with it. Actually, no, you can't. It will bite you in the butt maybe yeah. 10 years later, but it will tell you, hey, you did this to me. And when I say to me, it's the body and the mind. And yeah. we have to keep our mind open for the aging process, which is completely natural. It, we cannot do anything else. Nothing, actually. Even in politics, in science, we cannot stop aging. We stop every second. We, as we age every second, we, we age every minute and we age every day and year. And I truly think uh, with aging, we just have to keep our mind open that we can learn at any age of our lives, at any time you can jump ships, you can, be, be, you can become someone else. And, but please, Take care of your body and take care of your mind. Yeah. This is this is your treasure. This is your these are your tools to move forward. If you don't, 
uh, usually won't die. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's what it is. Well, I want to stay with that thought for a minute because let's see, that's not a metaphor. I want to really play that out with you. Absolutely shrivel and die. Let's talk about the ways you can shrivel and die. And this appeal, this is for anybody at any age. How do I know? Because I've been there. Even as a yeah. young, uh, even as a younger person, I know what that feels like. So, what does that what does that mean? Shrivel and die. Here's the way it goes. Some people say your soul, you can shrivel and die. Some people say your body, you can shrivel and die. Some people say your emotions, you can shrivel and die. Some people say your mind. So when we talk about shrivel and die, what we're talking about, any or all of those, you see, because isn't it true? We die on the inside a lot of times before we die on the outside. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. But the outside is the shell. <laughs> you know, uh, it's 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 definitely it's our shell. Uh, we protect the inside, but the inside cannot be protected uh, from the shell with your emotions, the emotions, your thoughts, and your thoughts. This is who you are. Mm -hmm. You put your thoughts in, and if you tell yourself, "Oh, I'm never gonna do this. I, I I'm gonna be old, and I won't be able to move." Guess what? It will happen. But if yeah. you put in your mind, well, when I get older, oh, I'm going to run the marathon. Uh, maybe now you don't have time, but you can prepare yourself. Or even at 70, I will climb a mountain. So why not? I heard too many times, uh, you know, don't you think you're too old to do this? Oh, my gosh. Okay, oh. so get ready for this. <laughs> so uh, the other day I did a show and I, no, I did something where I, uh, it was either a show or something where I was talking to somebody and I was telling them about what I discovered about my family and my heritage. And they came back and here's what they said to me. Now, uh, please don't email me. Please don't get me offended. This is really what was said to me. They said, that explains everything. So I was telling them that I discovered about five years ago or so, that on my mother's side of the family, we had a secret. My grandfather was a farmer born in Brazil. So that was the big secret. Everybody thought, oh, it's Italy, the whole thing. No, that was like a lie. So I was telling that story and I got an email from somebody I know who said, that explains it all. And I have typed them back and I said, like, what explains what does it explain? Like my person, they said, that explains why you look as young as you do. And I, I, I was sitting here thinking about our show and, you know, I didn't email them back because it's a perfect example, Barbara, of what you're going to talk about now. The rules of society that yeah. you have to look a certain way at a certain age, yeah. right? Now, I have to tell you, I've known Jessica since she started here as an intern. That child has not changed, not a single look, not a hair on her head. We don't even have the mindset here of age. Somebody asked yeah. me, um, one of one of one of the people we're talking with here asked me what our age range was because they thought that we didn't honor diversity. And when they heard the age range of our team, mm -hmm. some like 20 to 73. Do you know what they said to me? They said, you got to be the 73. I said, I'm not. So you see how plugged in we exactly. are yeah. to, to age. What is the impact of that on our mind? What is the impact of that, Barbara? Because I'm sure, look, your journey, what you stepped out to do, you have been hearing this for years. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a, it, it has a big, I mean, it, it has an impact because we, uh, we, we have the rules of society is, like you said, we have to have a certain look on a certain age and uh that that includes even you know oh yeah you're 50 you can have 10 pounds more you're 50 <laughs> or you're 60 yes uh of course now you you, you don't need to run anymore well huh. i i'm i'm really and i said why what what is it what what uh holds you back not to run then she said well well, your knees, your hips. I said, no, I'm taking care of myself since I'm 20 years old. Uh, and I really want to throw that out because uh, even the young young women, the young men now, they, they, they think they're never going to be uh, unhealthy. But if they go on eating pizza every day and not working out and having, uh, you know, drinking a lot and 
And even then they get away with it in their 20s a little bit because the body is not uh, still can us absorb it, but suddenly it's too much. Suddenly yeah. the body, hey, yeah, I can't handle this anymore. In yeah. the 30, then they, they slow down, but it doesn't have to be like this. That's why we shouldn't listen to the society. Listen to the society. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's okay if you're in pain and in your fifties and your sixties. It's not. We need to to go to the root of the problem and find why do I have to have pain and not just swallow pills. What is my body telling me? And guess what? At any age, you can rebuild your muscles. Yeah, any I age. have a look. I got a great story. It happened to, right before the show. Uh, what in my in my my place here uh one of my uh smoke detectors started to beep yeah a chirp that's what you're talking about we get signs from our body about yeah. things that need to have attention paid to them yeah right and they start to chirp yeah and when we don't pay attention to them they chirp louder yeah and louder absolutely but part of this that I want to ask you when we come back from break, I want to ask you this question is, you know, here we are. How can we help people understand that we have the ability to make up our own minds on how we age? Yes. And if we make up our own minds, there's an end game. There's yeah. a different end game. And I want to talk about that when we come back. Before we go to break, I want you to all know that this is Keeping Up With Barbara. You can go to barbarascheidegger.com. Uh, if you want to find out more, we have lots of information there. What you'll find is uh, several ways to contact Barbara as well as work with her. Um, certified coach, NLP expert, thought leader, internationally known, um, top CEO entrepreneur. She understands business. She understands life. And now she, she is this year taking a very strong message out into the world. And this is what she wants to help you do. She wants to help you keep up. Keep up with anything in your life. Keep up with finances. Keep up with the way you think. Keep up with your relationship. Keep up with your career, your job. Keep up with your own inner sense of self and vision. That's what she does. That's what she's committed to. Let's take a short break. When we come back, ask yourself this question. Do you believe, do you believe this? Do you believe you can make up your mind on how you want to age? Do you think Betty White did that? Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody, welcome back to Keeping Up with Barbara. I'm Dr. Pat. I am so honored to take this journey with Barbara Scheidegger. As I said before, thought leader, world-renowned entrepreneur, CEO, committed to helping women, people at all ages understand their a unique and expandable potential. That's what she does. You know, when she launched Keeping Up about a year ago, the idea was that this is about the, uh, the this is about the notion of never feeling that you're less than, never feeling that you're behind, always understanding that whatever you're doing, whatever you want to change is possible. You know, and this is what she does. She helps you keep up with your positive thoughts. She helps you keep up with your vision. She helps you keep up with the absolute phenomenal life you want to live. She helps you understand it, become aware of it, and then remove the things that are in your way. Certified clinical hypnotherapist, NLP. I mean, she has prepared herself to help so many, especially coming out of the past three years. Uh, Barbara, before break, here's a question uh, that I asked. Let's have you answer it. Did you make up your mind how you wanted to age? Now, that is a did you, Barbara, but it's also can we? So let's well, talk about that. Uh, yes, I did that when I was 20 years old. <laughs> 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 it was quite interesting uh, because at that time there was no support basically you know how to eat how to lose weight it's like don't eat you lose weight basically and if you eat you gain weight mm -hmm. <laughs> that's basically what it is but the healthy nutrition wasn't explained so I had to figure it out myself I was 20 about no I was 30 pounds overweight in when I was when I turned 20 and uh, at, my, at the same time, my mother was maybe 56 and uh, all my aunts and friends, mothers, they, uh, they, they were in their 50s. And what started there, I looked at them and they started like, oh, high blood pressure, they gained weight, 
they became sad looking women. You know, they started suddenly to wear black and gray and brown. The colors were gone. And there was no movement. There was no, we were, oh, I can't walk anymore. Uh, I'm, you know, and especially then in menopause, oh, he hits them suddenly, I cannot have kids anymore. And things went downhill with these women. Women who were active before uh, suddenly were old in their 50s. And it was, oh, it's her 50s birthday. She's going to be old. And that's exactly what I looked at. Is This is not going to happen to me. Immediately, I realized if I keep my 30 pounds on now, I'm going to suffer and it's going to be harder for my body to function, going up the stairs, swimming, running. I won't be able to do that, that in my 50s if I don't take care of myself. In one year, I lost the 30 pounds. But what was very interesting, I sat down and I sat, told myself in, in a calm way in space, you did this to yourself. You're heavy because you're eating and you're not paying attention to your body. Now it's time to lose weight. Now it's time to dump it and become just healthy. It has nothing to do with being skinny, you know, and thin and wearing size two and size four. You, everybody is different. Some people, they are uh, very comfortable uh, on a certain way. Even if the doctor says you have to, well, 10 pounds would be good. It's how you take care of your body. And I started to work out. I started to look at nutrition and uh, in my mind was always that picture. I'm going to be young and good looking at every age of my life. I'm going to, to die late, but, on a, but young. And that's what it is. And I kept it up. I had, I had to pay attention to it, but it's a mind game, a mind game. When I suddenly started to gain one or two pounds, uh, I looked at it and said, no, 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 no. And I just, it's not that I starve myself, I eat. And that doesn't mean I never can have a glass of wine or a piece right. of chocolate. Yeah. You, you find the balance. It's just during the process when you learn how to eat and it's your diet. It's not my diet. What works for you might not work for me. And that's what we need to pay attention to. All those diets, they're out there. I ask, for, uh, I ask sometimes people, yeah, I'm on diet, I'm on the keto diet. I said, for how long? Well, I think I'm doing it for three months. And then after what? After that, what are you going to do? Learn to eat right what's for your body right now. It's a mind game. Yeah. It's definitely a mind game. Yeah. You know, I'm glad you brought that up because people know, you know, I, I have a friend that lives on the keto diet and loves it, works really well for her. Yeah. And then there are those of us that just don't even understand how to consume that amount of fat in a day. It's yeah. not that we don't eat it, but there are other ways that we can go about it. What yeah. you said is so important, Barbara. It, this is not a one size fits all life game. No, absolutely not. Look, also, uh, they say, well, now there's certain diets you can eat and lose weight and you don't have to move. You don't have to go to exercise. You don't have to go to the gym. How dare are you saying that? Okay, you lose your weight, but your body has to work. Your muscles have to expand. If you expand your muscles and, uh, during the day, your brain also works better. The whole body is, uh, is uh, how do you say, uh, just back in the working game. Every single cell in your body then knows exactly what to do because the game is on. Yes, the ball has to go here to number two, number three, number four. But if you sit down and you wait, uh, the cells all know, they just wait. And yeah. some of them, they die. And unfortunately, you can't get them back anymore. You know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a game. <laughs> Look, we have, to, we have to die. There is no question out of it. But until that happens, live a life be healthy and be joyful. Yeah. Remember who you are and not uh, don't be the person that the society tells you to do. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's really, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, get I get, I'm getting upset sometimes when I hear or say that, but please come on, look in the mirror. 
Who are you? Recognize yeah. who you are. And then when what do you like about you and what do you want to change about you? And it's not about the physical. That that comes later. Look, I'm not against if you do something for your skin. Yeah, we're not saying that. That does not change anything in the inside. Yeah. The inside has to be taken care of like a car. You yeah. polish your car every day, you make it nice and shiny, but you know, don't change the oil, you don't change the tires, you don't fill water in, uh, your car will die. Looks good though, but hey, <laughs> it doesn't bring you to another place anymore. But if you do that on a, in a car, it will maybe last for another 100,000 to one month. Yeah. It's so interesting. We're talking about this because I love that. I love that you got emotional about it because it is emotional. And what's emotional about it is when we buy into what, when we buy into what is said to us, what goes against what we intuitively know, when we listen to things that drop or, or, or just demotivate us, drop our self-esteem, tell us we're not good enough. And we are now bombarded. It's interesting. I, I love to watch these reality shows, like the fashion shows. I, I just I, mean, I have I can't sew to save my life. So don't even think that. But I love to watch other people's talents. I really love yeah. the creative. Um, uh, and so uh, uh, Gigi, uh, Gigi Hadid is is got is co-hosting a, a fashion show. And what an amazing young woman she is. Now, everybody knows her, a model, just incredible, right? Entrepreneur now, stepping out co-hosting this fashion show, but she cannot get away from the headlines. And I think about this for a minute. And I think about you and I, we can live our lives. We can do what we're doing today. And then I look at other people that are always in the spotlight and have figured it out. Yeah. Cindy Crawford figured it out. Uh, other people figured it out, right? I want to know from you, there is a, there's a formula that people can learn as to whether or not you're going to sink low with public opinion. I mean, my gosh, Gigi can't get out of the car with a tote bag without somebody commenting about something personal in her life. But it didn't yeah. seem to stop her, see? So it let's talk exactly. about what that formula is. Yeah, it, it is, you know, uh, like you said, model, entrepreneur, and then something else and then something else because you cannot be a, a, a probably a fashion model until the end of the your life <laughs> but uh, uh i say you you started it with that and you become a model of something else and something else and you you have to again you have to jump ships and not when you were then a model and suddenly you are not that much in demand anymore right uh it happens a lot and they just step back and say, I'm a nobody anymore. Nobody wants me. Nobody loves me. No, yeah. step up to the plate and say, I did this. It brought me to that this point of your, my life. And I, now I can show other people what life is and how you can live in, in glamour or not glamour. Uh, we, we, we don't have, can, can all be in front of the camera, but you're only, you always can be glamorous. You can go out there glamorous and send a message to other people, even if you sit somewhere and just have a coffee and talk to someone and uh, talking to them in a positive way with the I. Yeah. I am so happy to be here today and I'm so happy I, I have my cup of coffee or tea. I'm so happy to, to meet you. I'm so happy uh, to see your smile. And then look in the mirror and say that to yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's the self-talk. It is the self-talk. And, and, you know, let, and this is also, let's talk about this. This is also resilience. It's being able to bounce back, you know, and I'm not just talking about the top celebrities, although I wonder yeah. what's going on in, and I wonder what's going on in Gal Gadot's mind right now after the ridiculously cancellation of one, the next version of Wonder Woman, but, you know, it, but she's going to be fine. Why? Yeah. Because it's not about this. These people we see bounce up, bounce back. And we yeah. know them as, what do we know them as? Celebrities. They're no yeah. different than you and me. I think Absolutely. they have, I think they have different challenges. Oh yeah, yeah. But the idea of what you're talking about is universal. Yeah. This is a universal formula, isn't it? 
Oh, absolutely, yes. It's a. Uh, it's all what you make out of out of your life. It's all up to you. It's not the others. They can give you ideas and look at the idea and say, "Yeah, that works for me." Or that doesn't work for me. Or you look at someone who does something and say, "Who is uh, successful in that branch? What he does in that job?" And you have to be. You ask yourself. What do I want? Where do I want to be successful? And you want to be successful in your own life. You don't want to copy someone. And that realized, you know, uh, when I went to hypnosis school, it uh, we had different teachers and they had different approaches to do hypnosis. And they said to us, don't do what I do. Find your own way in your in your hypnosis session so it's yours because if you do mine it's not yours so what did I you find for yourself time. tell me what you found for yourself i found for myself that uh i just can i learn different kinds and then make made my own uh session the way i talk to people i had yeah. to use my words and not their words yeah and that's very important i learned I, I i learned with them with their words but he gave me ideas how I can use my words. Yeah. And at the same time in hypnosis session, I listen to my client and how he talks. And my question is always, what do you want? And he tells me what he wants or she, and I use their words in their session. Then I make the session their session. So one size does not fit all. It doesn't. Every session is different with each, each client. Yeah. And that's yeah. what we have to pay attention to. We have to make our life. We have to start with self-love, self-acceptance. And once we have that, life is easy. Yeah. You know, look, when we come back from break, we're going to talk about how to listen better. This is something that I personally had to learn. I think you, You've become a master at it. But yeah. for me, it is paying attention. And yeah. there are just some things that we can... Look, it's like I told you about the smoke detector that went off. That smoke detector was saying something. Yeah. It was just chirping until I got on a ladder. I took it down. I didn't even see a battery, but whatever yeah. I did stopped it from chirping. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure what would have happened if I didn't, but I will tell you in the past, when I have not paid attention to that, the chirp gets louder, the chirp gets louder, yeah. and then it gets so loud that it doesn't stop. That's the way our body may talk to us we're going to take a short break when we come back hold on to this question just think about this for a minute are you really listening to your body are you really listening are, are you are you putting that thing in your body and your body's like oh my gosh i am not digesting this well and you still don't pay attention and and I, let me just make a comment I do love a good piece of pizza every once oh, in a absolutely. while. So let me just yeah. say oh, that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a short break. We'll be right back with Keeping Up with Barbara. Hey, everybody, welcome back to Keeping Up with Barbara. If you want more information about Barbara, there's a number of ways you can find it. You can go to Keeping Up with barbara.com you can go to barbarashideger.com and in a little bit you're going to see lots more from barbara's amazing short video she's created it's just fascinating it's just beautiful to watch you're going to see a lot more social media posts on her fantastic formula for helping us have the mindset we need to have we want to have but we may not know how to develop see that's the key that's the key we all have to learn a few things. Uh, before the break, what I said, Barbara, was, are you listening? Are you really listening to your body? Let's kick it off from there. Because it is like a smoke detector that has a little bit something faulty or going on with it that it's like, chirp, chirp, right? Until it doesn't chirp anymore. And then it's just not a chirp anymore. It's like a big beep. And then it's a loud beep. And then it's a loud sound. By the time our body gets to a loud sound, what the heck does that feel like? Oh, then, then you're ready to, for surgery, then you're ready for, to, for hospital, then you're ready for pain in front of you. It's, it's just what it is. We have to pay, to pay attention to the little, like you say, the little chirp, 
what is it? Oh my God, yes. Uh, and we do that when we are younger, that, oh, what is that? But when we get older, we somehow just blame it uh, on our age that, oh yeah, I didn't sleep well again. I didn't uh, stand upright. Well, learn how to sleep well and learn how to stand upright and listen when you move, uh, what happened? When you stop something, uh, let's, let's, let's say you, you eat something in the, in the evening or in the morning and you feel heavy. It, it doesn't it doesn't feel good anymore. So make a list. What did I eat today? What did I do today? What uh, what should, when if I cut out this, maybe I feel better. Uh, it's it's really interesting because I talked to a, a younger man. He was probably in his forties. Uh, we were sitting next to each other at the bar, and we and we had both dinner, and. Uh, he said to me, we, we were eating and I, he said to me, I don't eat bread anymore. No I bread. Said, okay. No bread. Nothing with bread. He said, I realized I just stopped bread because I just had the feeling it makes me tired. And I got always sea, seasickness when I went on a boat, so I couldn't go with my friends. And I just stopped eating bread. And after six months, I went on the boat with my friends and I had no seasickness anymore. And my stomach is not that heavy anymore. So he said, just by stopping bread, I made a change. So he said it was it, it was hard because what we eat in the morning is bread. Everything has bread, 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 bread. But he made a change. And uh, that's what we need to do because th there are certain things that the body doesn't want. And we have to pay attention to that. And it's, it's, it comes to the surface by pain or a little tweak or headaches or suddenly you can't sleep anymore. So ask, you, ask, ask the body. You really have, can have a talk with your body. What is it? What do I have to change? Uh, put your mind to it, to this, that I can change that. This can be changed. So you don't have to pop pills and uh, helps you for a half an hour or an hour, or maybe a day, and tomorrow you have to pop another bill, pill. And then you pop a, a pill because you took that pill, has side effects, and to, uh, oh my God, it's a never ending story. So, yes, listen to the little tweak, stand still and ask the question What do I have to change to get rid of this? So I feel better. Yeah. I want to, I want to stay with this point for a minute because I was just looking something up here. One of the things I love, and this is what you're going to hear a lot more from me about, and let's just follow through on what we're talking about here, because this is really important. You mentioned a number of different things that are indicators. I want to go to one of them in particular, if you don't mind. And the one I want to go to is sleep. Mm -hmm. Um, I was speaking with somebody very close to me, somebody I'm helping. And mm -hmm. I was speaking with her last night. I love her attitude and her attitude after the year she went through the loss of her husband, uh, the absolutely destruction of her property by an adjacent developer, now probably facing a lawsuit, a year of not being in her house. I mean, I can go on about it. And, you know, what I love about being involved in helping, there's, there's a team of us helping her with many, many things. One of the things I love about it is being able to say to her, look, I love how stoic you are, but it's okay for you to feel the pain of that. Absolutely. So we're not telling people here. I want to be really clear. We are not telling people here to deny or ignore what is going no. on in your life. No, absolutely not. But you have to face it. You have to face it and you have to see something on the other end of it that is not in the victim hood state correct exactly, yeah it doesn't mean as susan denae would say it doesn't mean we become doormats but we have to learn the key to be able yeah. to take care of ourselves stand up for ourselves right and still oh, feel yeah. emotions sometimes barbara nine times out of ten we cannot do it ourselves that's why we go to people like you yeah oh you, you there's nothing wrong to for uh to help to ask for help and that's what you once you do ask for help, you realize you're not alone. You're definitely not alone. And uh, 
that's what we have to stand up to not being ashamed of ourselves what we went through no matter what that is we 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 experience hurt and deal with it and how can i move forward as a survivor don't be a victim for you, yourself oh my god now i'm a victim and for me and it brings you down we have to stand up and say i i can do this there is something else uh, we say at the end of the tunnel there is something else uh working for waiting for me and also what do you want do you if you go on like this today in your victim mentality where are you going to be in in a year in two years three years or you stand up to yourself and say hey that does not work for me it's, it's a mind game your thoughts when you when you have that negative thought oh my god poor me and i, I go through that too from time to time said what the heck are you doing no, yeah. no 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 you have those 90 seconds to change your thoughts and that if you keep the thoughts for more than 90 seconds you really go in into the victim me mentality but if you straightforward say no this does not work for me this works for me and i want to do this 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 and I'll be happy with that. We're going all through our up and downs and there are some heart, uh, hardships going on, relationships. Uh, also in relationships, on a certain age, do you wanna be in this and wanna feel uh, not loved anymore, but you're in this relationship just because you're in probably 30 years and you just fearful of the change. Yeah, exactly. And that's what it is. And fear is it, it is the the, the major uh, obstacle to move that keeps us from moving forward. So how to get over the fear is looking it as a suddenly it's an opportunity. Yeah, now I mean, it's time to change. Now yeah. it's time to move forward. And you know, let's talk about this for a minute because. Um, you know, one of the things that I love is this is a perspective you're bringing out because you're a person that has gone through it. You've been there. You've seen that. Yeah. You bought the T-shirt. You wore the T-shirt. You burned the T-shirt. So you're not yeah. talking from the place of um, somebody that pulled a book off the shelf, although you and I read a lot of books. It, we're, we're, you're <laughs> talking from Barbara Scheidegger, who reinvented herself again, yeah. stepped out in the world decided she wanted to be a model, something she'd always wanted to do, to feel that experience, to go through the process. You did that. You battled, overcame what society calls disease and illness. Yeah. And now what you're doing with that is you're taking all of your education, all of your credentials, and you're helping other people. Because it's those of us that have actually experienced something and then got a few tools that yeah. now have to help other people because I do believe other people don't know which way to go. They don't know to go right. They don't know to go left. And my gosh, why would they know that? Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely a, a learning experience. You can learn again. You can, you, you can move forward with, with that straight thought. And that's why I say today, please, what do you want? Do you, do you, are you happy to see yourself in the morning? Are you loving your smile? Do you like to hear your voice? How about the sunrise you see this morning? And look at it and start in the morning already telling you, I'm happy. I'm happy to see you. I love your smile. I'm so proud of you, what you accomplished until today. Look how far you came. Don't look back. Just see further. There is more to come. Yeah. I'm so happy that I can talk to you yeah. and say that. And this is uh, something that you start in the look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. And do that. You know, it sounds strange in the beginning, but it's not. We all have self talks. So start um, with positive thought in the morning. Yeah. I had a meeting this morning. I want to I talk about it when we come back from break because it really addresses what we're about to talk about here. And um, 
one of the things I love about this is to show up, Barbara, the way you're showing up, the way we're showing up as a network right now, what we're planning, what we're doing, um, it takes a combination of things. Yep. It takes a lot of things. It takes putting it all together. Now, when I say it takes putting it all together, I am not talking about just one big thing. You know what it's like? Here's what it's like. It reminds me of my grandma. And I remember my grandma. And I remember my grandma, the first time she took me and my cousin and brought us in there and said, we're going to make the pasta. We're going to make the gravy. See, Italians don't call it sauce. I don't even understand. Gravy. We grew up on gravy, right? Mm -hmm. Spaghetti sauce. And I'm, we have to be like four, four or five, me and Billy. And I remember grandma saying, and we were like, we know what her sauce is like. The brujol, the meatballs, the sausage, the, like everything, like fresh tomatoes from grandpa's yard, the, the whole... And, and and so we just were like, I remember this. I remember being shocked. But here's what she did. Step by step. Yeah. Ingredient by ingredient. I got to work with the basil. Billy got to cut the onions. Step by step. Now, clearly, this would have taken grandma like a quarter of the time. But she sat us on these stools. I'll never forget this, Barbara. Yeah. And we sat there for hours, hours, and she would give us this and put it in here. See, this is what we're talking about, everyone. I want you to know this. If you're sitting there and you're thinking, I'm 50 pounds overweight, I'll never be able to do it. Think about this. You start with olive oil in a pan. You saute the garlic. Think about this. There are steps to take and every step gets you closer. Yeah. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, get ready for Barbara pulling it all together. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is Keeping Up with Barbara. If you want to know more about Barbara Scheidegger, if you want to work with her directly, uh, you can go to barbarascheidegger.com or you can go to keepingupwithbarbara.com. Either way, you'll get there. Um, today, what we're talking about, and you know, this episode title is so relevant and so pivotal. And you know, when we talk about the idea of don't let age change you, change the way you age. So this is not just a message for whatever age group you think you're in. This is for everybody. This is for everybody. It doesn't matter what age you're at. It doesn't matter. But we have gone through a number of things. So Barbara, why don't you bring it all together? I was talking, I was using my my grandma, the example with grandma. And I, I love it. I love it because for me, uh, also I say you have bricks, but uh, you still don't have a house. Yes. <laughs> it's brick by brick. And that's what we need to do. It's um, one by one. It's, it's you know, the easiest way, actually, is just if you want to uh, lose some pounds, you want to shed them. It's pound by pound. It's not 10 at the same time. It's the same thing. And so I say also, don't let age change you, change the way you age. L look at, look, look now how society tells you and I went through that you know I went up for modeling and she said well um it went well until I told them my age that I'm 62 and so I said well you should have gray hair and where are your wrinkles and uh, I said well I don't want gray hair yes I have a little bit but I I don't want that yet but at your age I said who makes the rules and that's what I say today for everyone who makes the rules in society to tell us where is that book who tells us how we have to behave at a certain age? We have to be kind in at any age of our lives. We have to be uh, nice to other people at any age of our lives. And we have to be uh, uh, confident of any age of your lives. And we give we give advice to anybody, but we forget ourselves. 
All these things we have to be kind to others. We have to be kind to ourselves. We are so damn hard on ourselves. We look at it and say, oh my God, I want to look like Cindy Crawford. <laughs> you cannot look like her. You're not going to be her. But make look for you that you satisfy for yourself. For start this, start already the process. What do you want to do? Looking like Cindy Crawford means I want to be healthy. I want to be successful. Uh, I want to be um, on a certain weight. That's entirely up to you. We cannot weight the same thing because we have different body structures. Yeah. And that's what I say. Start one by one, brick by brick, ingredients by ingredients. Start loving yourself. Start accepting yourself. See today what you have accomplished until now. And uh, if you want to learn something, go ahead and take that course. But yeah. inside, that's where it all starts. The inside. Look, look I, I want to just stay with Cindy Crawford for a minute. Now, Cindy Crawford started to do what Barbara's talking about decades ago. So when we mention Cindy Crawford, there's a very good reason we do. Um, takes care of herself, yes. Discovered how to do it, yes. Discovered ways to do it, yes. Uh, continued to be an entrepreneur and a business person, yes. When she was told to remove the mole on her face, remember that, Barbara? Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you remember when... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm so glad we're talking about Cindy. I love you, Cindy. But remember when she was told? I saw. I, can't, I read somewhere somebody told her get the get rid of the ditch the mole. Yeah, she knew not to do that. Yeah, right. It's See, this is what we're talking about, huh? right? Self confidence. Yeah, believe in yourself. And then again, you know, she 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 started with modeling. She has all of these steps. You have to make a decision to move forward, but you're not doing it alone. It's like your grandma handed you the basil, handed you the garlic, or handed you the olive oil. You know, you you can have support. Ask for support. Don't be afraid and fearful to ask, oh, my, my story sounds so stupid. Uh, who is the judge? Why, why are you judging yourself that badly? No, tell the story and you realize that you have so much support because you, you wake up another story in someone else, another story in someone else. And we have all these stories at the end of the day, it's the same story. We had to get over fear. We had to get over the, the finger pointing of society. And we had to get over uh, ourselves that we wanna be someone else who we are not. And that's when we get really become miserable. Become yourself again. Who were you before you were you before? Did you forget that? Did you forget that you were that wonderful person, a young moved forward, uh, suddenly jumped off a mountain or did a crazy flip? Where were the where was the fear then? Where is the fear coming to from today? It's because people science as uh, as People tell you, society, society tells you what you cannot do and what you can do. Yeah. And we hang on what we cannot do. And why? Because we want to be part of them. We want to be accepted. No, be different. Be you. Because we all have a different DNA. We have all different ideas. And we can all accept those ideas. And uh, you want to want to go with these ideas? Fine. But you have other ideas? Then you do the other one. You don't have to do what other people tell you to do if you're not convinced. Yeah, I love this. Listen, 20 years ago, this is our 20th anniversary. We are pioneers in podcasting. Many people don't know that. My first show was a digital show. I knew that the digital format would become what it is today. I knew it. Don't ask me how I knew. I don't have any education. 20 years ago, Barbara, 20 years ago, I bought my first hour on the internet for internet talk. 20 years ago, we were using flip phones, right? I think yeah. we still had like the dial-ups or something. Yeah. Uh, but here's the thing. Oh, yeah. The dial-up. <laughs> here's the thing. I, I was part of a network and I said, I need to talk about everything positive. And they said, great. 
there were three of us 20 years ago that I could find that were doing positive media like this. Myself, Patricia Raskin, and Dr. Lieberman. And the three of us are still, still doing it. Rob and Brenda came out a little bit earlier with a spiritual positive alternative, but outside of a small group of people. Now, I was approached and I was told by a nationally syndicated network in Seattle that I had a great show. It could be great. I could be pick it up. But I have to change it. I said, what do you want me to change? They said, well, you're too nice. I said, what do you mean? They said, like, yeah. uh, you know, you bring in on people. You're like always agreeing with them. I said, that's what my show's about. I bring on thought leaders, people that create a better world. They said, no, you have to bring on people and, and argue with them. I said, what do you mean? I, I mean, this is me. 20 years ago, I'm like, what do you mean? Like, argue with them about what? I can say I can argue about sports. Do you want me to, like, do sports? And, like, no. They said, you need to bring people on that are controversial, that you're not going to agree with. Oh, you want me to bring people on and perhaps embarrass them because now they're a guest on my show. I said, I'm not doing that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even understand what the implications of saying no to this executive was. You do though, Barbara. Yeah. Can you imagine me trying to do a show like that? See, this I, is what we're talking about. I, I, yeah, it's, 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 look, it's the same thing. Uh, when they tried to do it, the TV show in a positive way, in positive thoughts, didn't work because people wanted negative. Yes. People hang on on the negative. Instead of look, instead of looking in the mirror and say, oh my God, this looks good. You say, oh, here, there's a wrinkle. What can I do for it? No, look, I'm, I'm good. I'm fine. So that's what I'm saying today. Look at yourself in a positive way, you accomplish so much, especially now the, the ladies and men who are aging. You accomplish so much and you can do more. Not, it, you're holding yourself back. And why? Because you're fearful. You're, you're afraid what the, your neighbor would say, look, she's crazy. Mm -hmm. And I heard that, I'm crazy. So, okay, then I'm a crazy person. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm not hurting any, as long as you don't hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. with what you're doing or steal money or take somebody else's property mm -hmm. in a, a not legal way, uh, you're good. Yeah. You're good. You know, it's fascinating. We're talking about this. You and I are both business people. You know, you ran a multi-million, whatever, whatever it was. You understand what it's like to be at the head of that. So do I. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, so I, I have been asked by book companies, what's your book going to be about? We want you to write like, you know, you're so positive. I said, let me just be really clear to you. If you were to ask my staff on any given day, if they thought I was so positive, I bet you'd get a wide range of answers. Because on some days, most of the time, I'm positive and upbeat. But I'm also a business person. Yeah. And so when you're in business and you are really managing a group of people, sometimes you have to be direct. And sometimes, Barbara, you have to make tough decisions. Oh, yeah. But 80% of the time, it's hard to find me not smiling. Yeah. That's what it is. It's uh, it, it just, yeah, start with a smile, no matter what. Just smart. Smiling is contagious. Start laughing. The rest of the world starts laughing too. Did you see that video? You know, when he starts <laughs> laughing and suddenly... I have a laughing dog. Laughing. I have a little laughing dog. I'm going to be doing a clip of my dog because yeah. I'm like everybody else. There's some days you get up and you think, oh my gosh, I have been hit with a giant boulder. And I go over to my little dog and I guarantee you, if I bring that dog on the show, anybody watching this show, look, whatever is going to work for you. Isn't that what you're saying? Um, part of this for us is to also understand that we can change. Don't let age yeah. change you. We can do this anytime, right, Barbara? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. We can change anytime. We have to be willing. I cannot change people. You cannot change people, but we can talk to them so they, they realize and see what's going on within them, and then they can make the change. Yeah. So what has to, has to change for anyone who is listening right now? 
What is the biggest thing that has to change? And what do you want? How do you want to replace it? Yeah. And that's very important. You know, people ask me, and I know they ask you, they ask you, what is your end game? You know, I, I mean, when I get interviewed, I went back to an interview from 2007. But I don't know that you and I have an end game. I mean, we I have an end game of being the best we could be every day of our lives, taking care of ourselves, you know, aging in the way we want to age, whatever that looks like. I, I just, I don't like the the expression end game. And then it's the end. That, I, don't but have, that's, I know. And I then know. The, the, the word game for me is gambling. So I'm, I don't want to gamble either. No. I just want to move forward as long as I can in a happy, healthy life that I have created for myself. And I don't know how long that's going to last. It can be over tomorrow. It can be over in a, in a minute. But at the end of the day, what I want to leave the legacy behind me, she had a good life. I love it. She made what other people happy. Great way to end the show. Barbara Scheidegger, I'm Dr. Pat. I'm telling you, keeping up with Barbara. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Remember this. Don't let age change you. Change, change the way the you way age. age. Absolutely. All yeah, right, everybody. Power. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Keeping Up with Barbara Scheidegger. Keeping your body, mind, and life in tip-top shape is not only helping you live a longer life, but a better one. Whether you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s, or onward, you can still create beneficial habits that will help you on your path to ageless living. Choose to keep up with Barbara and live your life to the fullest. Visit barbarascheidegger.com to learn more and listen to her on transformationtalkradio.com.